Imagine a 1,000 pound truck toppling over on top of you, crushing chest pain, struggling for every breath, and even falling unconscious. These are the symptoms classically described by patients experiencing a heart attack. Now, unfortunately, mortality from cardiovascular disease remains one of the greatest unsolved health problems of the industrialized world. In fact, 9 in 10 Canadians possess a risk factor for heart disease and stroke, and approximately 1.6 million Canadians are living with cardiovascular disease. Now, despite optimal therapeutic management, coronary artery disease remains a major cause of death. And one major reason for this is that a heart attack is characterized not only by heart cell death, but also by scarring. It's much like a scar that would form on your skin after a scrape, but the skin is much better at healing than the heart. And in order to compensate for this destruction, the heart has to remodel itself. And this remodeling involves abnormal cell growth, abnormal heart dilation, and this can cause congestive heart failure. So how do we prevent this detrimental process? And in fact, after a heart attack, the heart is able to activate some embryonic genes that support cardiac development and growth. And these genes support the growth of new blood vessels. And any new blood vessels would bring oxygen and nutrients to the area damaged by the heart attack. But unfortunately, this natural healing process is not enough, and a scar still forms. But what if we could inhibit the scarring process before it even begins? And this is the overarching goal of my PhD, to support blood vessel growth and cardiac regeneration. Now, it's now known that in the first day of life, neonatal mice possess the capacity to completely regenerate their hearts. But by the seventh day of life, this capacity is lost. And the first portion of my PhD was devoted to developing a 100% reproducible neonatal mouse heart attack model with which to study the differences between a regenerative heart and a non-regenerative heart. And using my model, I've demonstrated that many embryonic genes that support blood vessel growth are upregulated more so in the regenerative heart than in the non-regenerative heart. So I hypothesized, if we can upregulate these genes in the older animal, could we prevent heart failure? And indeed, by injecting a compound that supports blood vessel growth, I've been able to reduce scarring in the non-regenerative hearts by 50%. And when I ultrasound these hearts to look at their function, they're able to plump blood just as well as non-injured hearts. So it's my hope that my future studies will contribute to the development of a new drug that may prevent heart failure in the future. Wouldn't that be amazing if our older relatives with heart failure could receive just a simple injection and they could start regenerating their own heart cells? Thank you.